So the American Gas Association has a glossary of terms. And so if you take a look at it, they have a whole thing on Joule-Thompson coil. It says the Joule-Thompson effect is the cooling which occurs when a compressed gas is allowed to expand in such a way that no external work is done. So they're, they're not doing the turbo expander. No external work. It's also, there's no heat transfer. So Q dot's equal to zero and W dot's equal to zero. And they say the effect is approximately seven degrees Fahrenheit per 100 PSI for natural gas. So what is natural gas primarily? What component? Methane, CH4. So if you have a pipeline of methane, and there's lots of pipelines of methane, then you have a valve. And that valve is partially closed. It's a restriction. And maybe you come in here with, uh, I don't know, 1,100 PSI. And it drops down on the back side of the valve to 100 PSI. All reasonable pressure. So what's the delta P? It's a 1,000 PSI pressure drop, right? They say that there will be a 7 degree Fahrenheit drop for every 100 PSI pressure drop. If this is coming in at, I don't know, uh, let's say it's coming in at 100 degrees F, what's the, the temperature drop if it, the pressure drops 1,000 PSI? 70 degrees F. What is the outlet temperature? Where does water freeze? 32. So a lot of times you only have 70 degree F natural gas flowing. You could get some very cold natural gas. And if you have just a little bit of moisture in it, which they try to get rid of, they really limit the amount of water vapor you can have in natural gas, then you can have problems because what will you have over here? Ice or some molecules acting like ice and they could build up. Let's say you close that valve down but it wasn't completely closed. A little bit's going through and with a little bit of water in it. Guess what could happen? It starts to deposit that water right there and build up ice, build up ice, build up ice. You decide to go open it and you don't get the flow you got because it's plugged. Let's see about understanding this with the temperature entropy diagram for methane. So again, methane, CH4, the primary component of natural gas. Okay, so we have the temperature. What do we have here? Degrees F. Maybe it's a little easier for us to understand. And then we do have entropy. It doesn't matter what the units are. It's pretty abstract, but it's in BTUs per pound mass degree R. What is this point right up here? Critical point. What's the temperature for methane's critical point? It's around negative 116 degrees F. All right, and the pressure is around 673 PSI A. So that right below the 700 PSI line, the critical point pressure. The thick blue line around 14.7 PSI A, atmospheric pressure. Uh, this is below atmospheric pressure. These are 100, 300, 700, 1500, 3000, and 7000 PSI. So those are for the red lines, those are constant enthalpy. Let's say we have 100 degree F at some pressure, 1500 or somewhere in there, right? And you want to drop it down to this pressure. You're going to follow a line that's red, and I know I didn't have one that intersected there. But you can see that you could have that uh, temperature drop that would cause ice up or ice building. We'll do a little work in Excel. I'm going to do this. I'm going to type methane, and that'll be the gas that I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about different states, state one, and then I'm going to go to state two, where I'll talk about the pressure, PSI, and the temperature in degrees F. What did we want to start at? 1,100 uh, pressure and maybe drop it down to 100 PSI, right? And what temperature do you want to start at? 70 degrees F? Let's call and get the enthalpy in BTU per LBM. And here we're going to have to use ref prop enthalpy of that gas. Now I could type that gas or just say go get it from this cell, A1. And if I want to always 
uh, keep it at A1, then what I'll do is I'll put a dollar sign and a dollar sign. So it's always going to go to A1 for the name. I'm going to evaluate as a function of pressure and temperature, English units, and the pressures in this cell, comma, temperatures in that cell, and I know those are the right units that this code likes, and so there's a value for the enthalpy. I undergo an isenthalpic expansion, and now I want to know this one, the pressure and the temperature fix the state. This time, the pressure and the enthalpy fix the state. So I say, give me the temperature as a 4 methane right here, dollar, dollar, okay. Knowing pressure and enthalpy, oops, that was a, I think I'm not supposed to have that there, for English units and that value of pressure, I have to grab it and scoot it in. Cell E4 has my enthalpy value. And take a look at that temperature. It's dropped down to 11.8 degrees F. That's way below 32, right? So what was the, the change in the pressure? That's just this pressure minus that pressure. So it was 1,000 PSIA. And what was our change in the temperature that we measured? It's equal to, it started at 70, ended at 11.8. So it was a 58.2. So my Joule-Thompson coefficient approximately is so many degrees change per PSI. So it's about, this is how many degrees F per PSIA, right? That's not so pretty because it looks like that. So what I want to do is I want to report the Joule-Thompson just like the Natural Gas Association did in that many degrees, but it's per 100 PSI. So it's in degrees F per 100 PSI. See the difference? So it looks like these values are coming in right at 5.8. What did it say? It was around 7, right? So it's close, but it's not spot on. In their glossary, it said it was around 7 degrees F per 100 PSI. What you can do is... Uh, um, start changing things. Let's say it went from 300 PSI to 100 PSI. Well, that's now 5.6. Um, also, this software is, can get the Joule-Thompson coefficient. It's equal to J-O-U. There, it's, it helps you remember what you're looking for, so hit tab to finish it. The Joule-Thompson for methane in cell A1 as a function of pressure temperature, English units, this value of pressure, this value of temperature, and it reports it to 0.054. If you wanted a Joule Thompson in the other units where it's degrees, no, let's just put F per 100 PSIA, you just take that value and multiply by 100, and you can see it a little clearer, right? So these values of Joule-Thompson coefficient are pretty close to this value right there. It's actually in between. 5.6 versus 5.4, 5.8. That makes sense? So this check with RefProp in Excel confirms what we expected.